G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is a rifle number 9 Mark 1 AM2. I'll just be referring it to as an AM2 just for simplicity's sake during the video, but what you get here is a somewhat customizable standalone rifle type weapon with custom sounds and animations, bullpup animations, which never cease to not impress me. Very nice stuff there, it's very high quality. Speaking of high quality, you'll notice looking at this thing, the meshes and textures are of top notch. It looks kind of goofy, it doesn't really fit in well with the art style of Fallout 4, but I reckon it fit in pretty well with the uh, original Fallouts back when it was all 2D and isometric, so a little bit of a nostalgic feel from this. It's obviously quite Quite an interesting looking prototype weapon for sure but yeah kind of cool that it's in this game through a mod high quality mod even so what you've got for the receivers is an automatic and a semi-automatic and ironically the semi-automatic does have a higher rate of fire that might mean you can just fire it as fast as you can pull the trigger which is good for dps but we'll keep this one as automatic for the barrels you don't have a lot going on here you can shorten the barrel a little bit that'll improve your hip fire accuracy and um yeah, it'll reduce your range, so not really great for performance, but like I was talking about with the AUG, yeah, you can see the barrel space here. It's uh, it's pretty long regardless of how far it comes out um, here, so that's kind of cool. It's like the bullpup thing. You get the extra barrel space, and it's, it's better for the bullets to flow through the thing. It's more accurate, I suppose. It gets uh, the, the uh, powder to more time to burn up and let the bullet flow through the barrel better. Anyways, let's stop talking about that. We'll move over to the iron sights, or the sights in general. So you've got the, the iron sights here, which you can flip down to use the goofy looking scope on the top. It's just a basic crosshair. There's nothing really there that is uh, particularly interesting or new. I mean, it is interesting enough because it's not really in the vanilla game. It's, it's kind of there, but they don't use it. So it's got a crosshair. It's not too hard to aim on. But if you want something a little bit more on the modern side, you can chuck on these sights, which look kind of silly on it, but you can have some reflex sights too. A scope for machine guns. I remember using that in Battlefield 3 on my M60 E4. Good times. I'll chuck on a micro on this. The reflex sight here I feel like is a nice fit. It's nice and tubular like the the gun here. That, that's cool. We'll move on now and you can chuck a muzzle on this. Compensators, muzzle brakes for recoil control. And this thing does actually kick quite a lot, so I do recommend you chucking on these. You do get penalized in range a little bit, but not as much as you would when using a suppressor, which you can have a noiseless suppressor or a viper suppressor. On the off chance that this thing fires snakes instead of bullets with the viper suppressor, I'm chucking that on. I don't think it'll happen though, I'm prepared to be disappointed. And you can change the uh, skin for a default with the uh, wooden stock and um, foregrip there, black polymer or tan polymer. Interestingly, the uh, polymer doesn't reduce the weight. I feel like it's a little bit lighter than wood, right? But I like it looking as is. I'll grab another tan one and a black one, and we'll use those on separate weapons, and maybe spec to uh, being semi-automatic. But that's what we get here. We've also got a legendary slot if we need that, but looks pretty mean. I like the look of this thing. I'll see where we usually shoot things. Okay, so here we are in Gunners Plaza. I'd like to make an amendment. This thing actually doesn't have custom sounds. I've just got Battlefield 4 replaces, and, you know, since I play a lot of Fallout 76, I get accustomed to uh, here figuring out which sounds are vanilla or not. But anyway, this is what the EM2 sort of looks like in first and third person. Unfortunately, this scope isn't really a scope. It's just a reflex sight. And this is what the iron sights look like, just if you're wondering. And the shorter barrel there. And, yeah, okay, so we're doing how much damage? 66 damage, 83 with the suppressor, thanks to um, Ace Operator. So, yeah, we might need to be stealth commandoing this to actually make it work, which, uh, even if we are stealth commandoing, we're killing them fast enough for sure, but as soon as we're not getting the sneak criticals, we're going to be hitting for under 100 per shot. We're only just getting over 100 from here. I mean, that was a little bit out of range, but that's what the reload animation looks like. The presentation of this mod is actually really good. The gun looks good. It feels good to fire. I mean, the vanilla sounds are standard, but they work for what it is. But the problem is, though, this thing is chambered in 308, and I'm doing 83 damage with it. Oof, that's bad, because uh, I could stick in the same rounds in a combat rifle and have it semi-auto, and it'll be much stronger. Luckily for me, I'm immune to being staggered from these melee attacks, but I can't even mag-dump these guys and get them killed, at least with torso shots. I'm gonna have to aim a little bit higher to actually do the job, or I could just use the suppressor and stealth command to everything, which I feel like is a good idea in this situation. Or I could use vats. I've got multiple tools at my disposal, but I can't help to feel that this thing's a little bit underpowered. I checked the mod for updates too, and uh, now I've got the latest version. Now, like I was saying before with the semi-auto receiver, it does fire basically as fast as you can pull the trigger. 
And if you're using a mouse, it's uh, incredibly easy to just to click on the mouse. So what that means is good DPS, perhaps even better DPS. Nice. Send that one into heaven. Must have been a well-behaved gunner if it's sent to heaven, that's for sure. What I might do is just play this a little bit cautiously, I suppose. That seems to be working for me so far. There's Captain Bridget, though. I think now is the time as any to use that. Go for a critical here. Although that might actually kill me because she'll get the shots in. Although she's gone for a stim pack, which leaves her slightly vulnerable for a second. There we go. Make sure she doesn't pick up Bridget's gun. She Oh, she did too. Clever. Oh, it's... Let me just pick up these. Sorry. Yeah, there's some bash animations, which... I'm not doing very well here. Even with the random criticals, I don't think that'd be game-changing damage. Let's switch over to the automatic one. See, it does have custom sounds a little bit, but the suppressed ones are pretty stock standard. But the ones without the suppressor, they're different. Listen. The guns are making a faster firing sound than it's actually firing, though, I feel like. Just try to get through the energy shields. Luckily for me, I've got, you know, 1400 health. Hey, you can't do that. That's cheating. I don't use stim packs, neither should you. Go for a critical here. Yeah, nice. I, I didn't have this mod actually active last time I played Fallout 4. Hopefully it's not too distracting. But yeah, usually what would happen is the, um, the kills would show up at the top of the screen like some sort of uh, first-person shooter. But that's not happening. I'm just getting those kooky hit marker sounds. I might turn it off after this because it's getting a little bit out of hand. It's pretty loud, actually. They're not particularly pleasant to listen to either. I'd much rather the tick out of the COD games, but yeah, basically, Stealth Rifleman, Stealth Commander, the only way to run this. Aim high, and you won't be as, I guess, disadvantaged as you would be otherwise, but yeah, Stealth can make any gun good if it's got a suppressor. Generally, you can do pretty well with it because ah, Stealth is so good, but all in all, it's actually a pretty decent weapon to use. It just feels a little bit underpowered. And also, here's the reload animation in third person. Very good stuff there. A lot of personality in the reload, too. Pretty happy with it, all things considered. Okay, so we're running the usual gauntlet here. Raiders, Super Mutants, and then the big Super Mutant. And I've beefed these weapons up with a little bit of ye old legendary effects. This one's instigating. Make use of that first shot potential. This one's got the Furious, which is completely broken in Fallout 4. Good to see that one back in its original form. And this one's explosive because fun. Anyways, we'll, we'll go on. We'll, we'll use the instigating one first, and we'll see what we can do to these guys. I mean, I'm not going to be able to snipe them, but if I'm at medium range where I can possibly see them, it might do all right. Using this, we get a 8.8 .8 times multiplier. Can do them one shot in the head if I'm good. Get half of the time, maybe. <laughs> nah. But, um, yeah, it does alright with the instigating legendary effect. I'm not really sure why there isn't more attachment points on this. Even just like a, a really basic sort of, um, a damage slider that you see on a lot of the mods, which allow you to, you know, tailor the weapon's damage to whatever difficulty you're playing on, which is a really good way of going about, um, I guess, me not complaining about the weapon underperforming, I guess, but it's just a, I reckon it's just a decent thing to have, because it's just, it's versatile, because not everyone plays on the same difficulty, especially if they're not on PC, where they've got access to all the mods in the world. That bear just bit me. My god. Savage. Anyways, we'll move over to the uh, automatic one now, with the uh, Furious Legendary effect, and uh, instead of the 5%, capped at like 45, 50%, in uh, Fallout 76, this is 15% and it stacks infinitely. So, yeah, you can just lay waste to all of the super mutants within a few shots. Especially if you shoot the ones with explosives in their arms in the arm, that usually gets them pretty good. But as you can tell, I kind of need this furious legendary effect when it comes to firing at these super mutants. Because these guys don't mess around, they've got a big old tanky health bar and you got to get it down somehow, right? The recoil on this thing is uh, fairly manageable though, so I'm liking that. If you're wondering who I'm playing as, it's one of my newer companion mods out there. It adds three from Nuka World. This particular character, she's called uh, Carla. She comes from the uh, the pack, the Nuka World gang from the pack, so she's a little bit crazy. 
Uh, apparently, this is the age of the super mutant. Well, they've been saying that since uh, wh wherever Fallout 76 uh, takes place, and uh, I'm still slaughtering them by the truckload every day. So, yeah, it's uh, not working out for old mate Greeny, but whatever. Yeah, I've got a couple of other companion mods made. I mean, none of them are released, and none of them have been, like, specifically worked on all that much, but I just needed more angels for my XCOM playthrough because I was tiring out the same... Uh, I guess I had 12. 12 angels before all the time. War of the Chosen ain't pretty, but... Yeah, I needed a few more numbers, and I figured out, hey, I need a robotics expert, so... Um, one of them is a Rust Devil, or... Wanted to be a Rust Devil before... She was brutally wounded by them and left for dead, and they stole the robot, but she made a new one. She's got a little iBot follower. That's, that's kind of her thing. And I didn't mean to copy the idea from the storyteller, but this one's actually cool, though, because it's got the same, um, the little digging bot that you get in that little quest that you do for that Bobby No-No's freak. Um, you got the little electricity thing on the front. Well, I've figured out... That's like a gorse thing, so instead of firing puny little laser beams out of it, it'll fire something, it'll fire the um, explosive, um, I mean the gorse rifle bullets, which is kind of cool I guess. I feel like that was a cool thing, and that'll follow her around, so it's it's a nice two-in-one. I'm just gonna have a, I have a lot of trouble actually balancing it because it tank a lot of the bullets, and since it doesn't really have a down position because Fallout never really, uh, Fallout 4 really didn't have any use of a essential or a protected NPC of a iBot. Um, it just kind of tanks the damage anyway, so I just put it as like completely in invincible to everything. But I don't know, the AI is kind of weird because it runs off and picks fights to stuff that's nowhere near Lily. So that's her name, by the way, Lily. And the the name, however, the name I actually made from Lily Allen, who is a British musician. 10 out of 10. Um, and also, the the last name is Clarkson, named after Jeremy Clarkson from Top Gear. <laughs> so, two of my favourite British people in one. How good's that? So, as you can tell, the Furious Legendary effect will make short work out of any monster. This is why they gave it the big old nerf. Um, actually, the only time you could actually get it on projectile weapons was back in... Uh, Nuka World, you get the Splatter Cannon, the uh, unique handmade. There's also another one uh, called... I, I don't remember what it was called, but it was a pack one that you get for intimidating old mate M Mason? I think his name was Mason. But yeah, you could pass a speed check and you'll say, here, take this, and it's the exact same thing, but for free. The only problem is you got to strip the ungodly, awful paint off it. Stupid lady, that's... Sexist, bro. You can't say that. I'll have you arrested for your microaggressions. <laughs> I could make jokes said the British now, but I won't. They're cool chaps for the most part. I don't like using the word chaps. It's too British of me. I'm supposed to have that bastardized British accent. That's what. That's basically what Australian is. Drunken British man. That's that's where the accent came from, and it's mutated into a whole different beast over time. You're getting the old explosive treatment to finish you off. Even with the Furious Legendary effect, it still takes bloody ages, doesn't it? Anyways, when we 1v1 on monster, though, it will not take as long, so let's do that. Can barely see anything out here, can I? Alrighty, this time I'm going to use a thing a little bit more in VAT, specifically the automatic version, because I did kill the uh, Captain Bridget synth clone with VATs with the uh, semi-auto one, but how does this fare when it's automatic state? Well, it gets a ton of shots. Oh, uh, sorry didn't turn off the, the, the noises. I swear it wasn't there before. I'm going mad, never mind. This should be an easy fight if he keeps up doing this. We need to worry uh, about his claws though, so if he does happen to get nice and close to us, then we're in trouble, but yeah, look at that. Imagine if they kept Furious as it is like right now in Fallout 76. You'd have the Scorch Beast Queen dead in like Two seconds from a minigun. Shush, 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 shush. Go away, Reddit. Don't give me notifications that I didn't ask for. Alright. And we hit him for 4,600 damage. Now, if I could find another enemy, that'll probably hit him for 15% harder. Because you can kind of gather a bunch of furious damage against one target. And it'll carry over for the first shot against your next target. Oh my god, that is a literal god drop. That is so good. I should go buy a lottery ticket because, man oh man, explosive shotguns in this game with 
They were basically what they were like in Fallout 76. Without the range problems, basically. It, it, they, were, they were great, but I can't believe I just pulled one out of that. Anyways, I think you get the idea. There's not a whole lot more I can show you to the weapon, because it, basically it's being carried by its specific legendary effects. I'm not wearing a Pip-Boy, but I can still use a flashlight anyway. I think I've got a mod that auto-unequips that, because it looks kind of goofy. But yeah, hopefully those at home can see, and if you're watching during the night, it'll be easier on your eyes. If you'd like to see this thing in your game, I'll provide a link in the description so you can check it out. I do recommend checking it out, and if you do have a little bit of um, skills using the creation kit, you can just use a PC and mess around with it a little bit, improve it how you want, if you're really attached to this thing, but yeah, I think I'll leave it there. If you'd like to see this particular character and two more, Kira and Vicky, in your games, I'll also chuck a link to that in the description as well. Thank you for watching, guys.